Hello, and welcome back to another EDH deck tech video. Today, I'm going to be showing one of my more casual decks. This is a Nicol Bolas slash Sol Kanar Swamp King deck. Uh, some time ago on my channel, I showed a Red Border Mogus deck. Um, I believe it was Mogus at the time. Uh, essentially, it was a white border themed deck where every card had been painted red to give the entire deck a red border theme. Unfortunately, that deck was actually stolen off of my desk at work, and over the past few months, I grieved for my loss. I tried to find it. I searched for anyone who would have sold parts of that deck, and it never happened. I have ended up rebuilding and actually adding blue to the deck. So this particular deck is Grixis, and the commander at choice is supposed to be Nicobolus, but it's usually better to run Solkanar. Um, Nicobolus is a very threatening commander. He's an 8-mana 7-7 seven, seven flyer with a upkeep. But when he hits, the opponent has to discard their hand. Uh, technically, it doesn't have to be damage, combat damage. I can make him ping. There's more uh, current cards that do that. This specific deck is very casual. There are no... 8th edition or above cards, even 8th edition white border cards are not in here because the frame is different. Uh, essentially every card in the deck is white border and pre-8th edition. For example, 7th and below or starter or like unlimited revised or some of the random pre-cons that came out back in the day like the beatdown or something like that. Now, I do have a white border bolus that I have left at a buddy's house a few states away. <laughs> so I've been running this one until I get that one recovered. But I mean, I also run Sol Kanar. He is a less intensive as a no upkeep commander. He's a five drop five five with swamp walk that gives me a little bit of life gain. I mean, this is generically an averagely good commander. If there are fewer opponents, I may run this. If I only happen to have this deck on me and there's just too many better opponents. Then I do actually run Kess as a tertiary commander, although she is definitely not intended to be the commander of this deck. It just so happens that most of this deck is spell-based, and she is a very good generic commander for that. But let's set the Bolai and the Solkanar over here, and let's go through the deck. So, again, this is going to be a very casual deck in power level. You're going to see a bunch of very awkwardly old cards here. But I mean, it still has given me about 10 plus years worth of cards to work with, which, I mean, there's some good cards. <laughs> For example, Royal Assassin. I mean, he's a three mana one one that I can tap to destroy a tapped creature. In the previous red border version of the deck, I had things like Icy Manipulator to combo with this, but this is just a better card to have on its own to make people not want to attack you. If people see the Icy Manipulator and him together, then they're more likely to think you're some kind of threat. We have a Hippie. Unfortunately, we don't have Dark Ritual in here anymore to get a turn one Hippie, but I mean, Hypnotic Spectre is still fantastic. Three mana, two, two. When he hits an opponent, they discard it random. Then we have, if you draw tricks, we have the Thieving Magpie. It's a Flyer 1 3, and we also have Luzun. When both of these connect, I draw a card. We have Clone, as well as Vesuvian Doppelganger, essentially two clones. There's a third in the deck that's an enchantment. We have Necrotal for a little bit of spot removal. We have Goblin Settler, which comes into play and destroys a land. This is a brand new card that's not fake. Uh, there's a handful of fake cards in the deck that due to financial value, I'm struggling to actually want to invest in. The uh, deck itself has a very low power level, so expending for high value cards is difficult. For example, this is a rather this is not a cheap card, um, and it was originally a proxy of a fake one, but this is actually a real copy of it. I'll point out the fake cards as I go. Uh, for example, Imperial Recruiter, this is a fake card. While I do have a place of the Judge promo ones, this deck requires white border. So I only have nine creatures, and he will tutor up any of these creatures. But this will eventually become a real card, because I see nothing wrong with owning real Imperial Recruiters. Let's go on through what the biggest chunk of the deck is, which is spells. This is a Grixis Spell Flinger deck. Everything here is an instant or sorcery spell. And this is kind of how the deck is going to try to win. It's usually through a disintegrate, like a big X burn spell, or attacking with the commander. That is the goal of the deck. But we have a lot of get there stuff. We have the brainstorm for some cantrip and a slide of hand. Unfortunately, we don't have any fetch lands, but I mean, brainstorm still 
one of the best cards we can run with this type of restriction. Sleight of Hand helps us dig a little bit deeper. We have Impulse to help dig a lot deeper. Diabolic Vision is fantastic. It lets us rearrange the top five and we can put one to our hand. We have Tidings for a draw four and a Brain Geyser for a big draw spell. We have Wheel of Fortune, which is the best draw seven we got. Time Twister is fantastic at resetting our graveyard. Again, this is a fake card. I will eventually get a real one for this deck because again, Time Twister is a card I don't mind owning a real copy of. Uh, Windfall is just a fantastic early game. What we actually end up doing uh, when playing this deck is tutoring for one of these three to get our lands out. The deck has 38 lands. The mana callers are very poor. We don't have very good dual lands to work with. We don't have fetch lands. So what I'll end up doing is if I see any tutors, I'll actually go find one of these so I can get some good landfall early, refill my hand, and hopefully that'll fix my mana for the rest of the game. Uh, the tutors, of course, we do have a mystical to go get one. We have a vampire tutor to help get these. Imperial seal, this is a real copy. Uh, we have a demonic tutor and a grim tutor, which is a fake copy. This will eventually be replaced again with a real grim tutor when I can. We have a few reanimation effects and reanimate and ashen powder. This only hits our opponents, not ourselves. Uh, we have time warp and a capture of Zhangju. This is again another fake card. I will eventually get real. Uh, actually, the price has dropped on this because there's recently been a Judge promo printing. So this will be most likely my next grab for this deck to continue making it all authentic. Uh, again, these are good cards to have when you have Nick Bolas out because you can try to resolve him and take a turn so you don't have to worry about giving him haste. I have no way of giving creatures haste in this deck. Again, if I'm playing uh, Kess, these are ideal things for Kess to dick around with too. We have a few troll cards just to kind of mess with the opponent. I have a passion for mana short. I love the original artwork. My favorite is actually the 7th edition because it looks fantastic in foil. But essentially this just makes an opponent skip their turn if you do this on their upkeep before they can do anything. And on your turn you can make sure they don't counter something before you go to a different phase. Ray of Command is also a very good troll card in combat. I actually prefer this artwork over like the Mirage one that everyone's more familiar with. Um, it's kind of an act of treason that gives haste and blue of all things, um, but this can also take someone attacking you and prevent that, that attacker. Juxtapose is another trolley card where I can dick around with my artifacts and creatures. A bunch of really weak, whimsical, tiny creatures, and I can try to swap them for something better. We have a fork, which is basically the best reverberate effect we have. It's the only one in white water. Mind twist to hate on one opponent. Disintegrate is actually one of the game's this deck's uh, best ways of trying to win. Just trying to wait out, install, maybe hit with Sulkanar, or hopefully bowl this once or twice, and then use this to finish off the opponent. We also have Volcanic Geyser, which is an instant speed version. It just loses the exile. We have a few Lightning Bolt variants in Incinerate, and Lightning Bolt, and Inferno, which again is a nice instant speed board wipe. This will 100% wipe all our creatures except for Bolas, but it does six to all opponents or players, including myself. So this will hurt, but this is very good for what the deck needs. Let's get this stack out of here real quick. The uh, glare on these sleeves is a little difficult to deal with. These are actually unsleeved from the protective layer I use because I do use the Nicobolus sleeves on the Nicobolus deck. Um, but these are very glary in the camera, sorry. But again, we have a lot of removal. We have some terror and an edict and an ashes, ashes to ashes and overwhelming forces is a legit card. It has dropped in price ever so slightly since the judge printing a few years ago. We have blue answers and evacuate and a few counters and memory lapse and counter spell and desertion. This may actually get us something we can try to win the game with if the opponent's playing better creatures. We have a few land hates on sinkhole and Stone Rain, as well as Pillage, which could be an artifact hate, such as Shatter. Again, uh, basically we are playing the best spells that we have access to with this kind of restriction. I mean, pre-8th edition, uh, the best spells were what won the game. Like, the creatures were just miserable, as you're seeing. We're playing a bunch of 1-1 one, one, and 1-3s that don't really have a large impact. So with this type of restriction, I am utterly reliant on using spells to try to win the game with. If I were to splash green, for example, I would maybe have a few more bigger creatures. But uh, that's, that was a thought, actually, making a, uh, a Victus deck. But uh, I chose not to. 
Now the deck does have a few enchantments, another reanimation effect. This is fantastic at getting a much better creature than what my decks can supply. Copy artifact. We have six mana rocks in this deck. Um, and again, this is something I've been thinking about, going from 38 to 40 lands when running Bolas. When running Solkanar, I don't need that many. So I'm in that weird flux place right now. With only six artifacts and 38 lands, I don't really think I have enough mana to support Bolas. It's that's I need to make a decision, and eventually I will. <laughs> but in the meantime, this is most likely going to copy an opponent's Guild of Lotus or whatever cool land or artifact they have out, like a Sol uh, Solemn, actually. Dance of Many is another clone. This one just has an upkeep. Again, if I'm doing something just like cloning a Solemn, I don't care about paying it. And we have Control Magic, so once again, we can try to take a, a nice beastie creature, something better than what our deck can supply. Let's go through the handful of artifacts that we have here. Again, I have six mana rocks that um, I'm running. There are more I could run. I could run some of those four drop batteries, like the black mana battery. Uh, those are really bad. Um, but as I'm trying to make the deck as good as it can with this restriction, we have Soaring, we have a Mana Vault, we have a Fell Warstone, and we have the three diamonds, which were luckily printed in the, uh, the fifth here. And the last artifact we have is a Neverl's Disc. Um, I chose this one over... Essentially, if you go through like the Unlimited Revise and Third and all the editions, the text box looks ridiculous on some of those editions. This is the cleanest one I could find. Finally, let's go through the lands. Uh, again, this is kind of the, the weakest parts of the deck. While I do have 38 land, which is a pretty high number for a deck with a rather low curve, I don't have good lands, and that's a weakest part here. Like, we have a strip mine, which is great, and we have City of Brass, which is probably the best land in the deck. I have three fake dual lands, which again, I will eventually replace. We have the Underground, the Volcanic, and the Badlands. Um, but then we have some bad ones, like just the best we can do. This is most likely just going to tap for Colorless, as I don't really have a high reliance of red early game. We have two pain lands, an Underground River and the Spring. Uh, the uh, Sulphur Falls or whatever the black, the red blue one was never printed in this kind of border. Uh, we have these come to play tap, ta double tap lands. This could be helpful if we need to get Bolas out fast against an opponent that we don't think can kill him. Um, but in short, these are basically just come to play tap lands that will only tap for one of each color. We have the set there. We also have a set of cycling lands. Again, they, one good thing we have access to here is the ability to cycle shit lands away if we draw too many, but Realistically, when playing Bolas, I actually need more lands in hand. Uh, then we have a bunch of basics. I chose to try to keep as many of these cards from this little symbol right there. That is the beatdown pre-con symbol. Um, and I try to tune as many cards to have that same symbol to try to make everything match when possible. And I believe we have 10 islands. We have 8 swamps and 6 mountains. So yeah, this is my current white border deck. Let's get Solkanar back here and Bolas. These are the intended generals. It is supposed to be a Nickel Bolas deck, but until I recover my white border of Bolas, it feels inappropriate to play him. I'm much more interested in playing with the Eon theme commander, which is currently Solkanar. He is also a less intensive commander when it comes to upkeep taxing myself. And that small life gain, while it seems whimsical, it does add up every now and then. Especially if the opponents themselves are playing black spells. Um, the Swamp Walk does help him actually get through sometimes if they can't deal. Uh, Bolas is a much more threatening and powerful commander. And sometimes that also causes issues because this deck is not powerful enough to actually support Bolas as a commander. His threat is much higher than what this deck can contain. But yeah, if you guys have any ideas or opinions, if you have ever played fun restriction decks like this, like White Border or Set Limited decks or Watermark-based decks, I love, I love these themes. Definitely share. Thanks.